about LinkedIn is because it's all about business, people have real reservations about, well, and I totally understand this, I don't think there's anything wrong with this, but it's, I've got to be careful what I do because it's a business community, people are going to see me, I'm very conscious of, of what I do. And I think part of my, a big part of my job is about showing them that actually, you know, just be a little bit brave and just go for it and just start connecting with people and start making things happen. The typical, a typical LinkedIn user and a typical client of mine will say things like, well I'm on there and I get invites all the time from all these people and I'm thinking, I don't really know what that means. So do I say yes or do I say no? And if I say no, do they know about it? And it's things like that. And it's more about me saying, you've got nothing to worry about that. You just have to have a strategy as to who you're going to connect with and who you're not going to connect with. And don't worry if you say no, they don't know you've said no. And things like that, that then encourages them to actually start to use it. Let's talk about some practicalities then. Um, photographs. Mm. Really important. Um, far more important than people think. Photograph in a LinkedIn profile, I mean LinkedIn will actually say they've got analysis to back this up, that people with a, a profile picture will be viewed 40% more than those that don't. Um, and I can totally see how that would be the case because we're naturally drawn to any graphic on a, on a page on a website. Um, but in addition to that, it, it's, it's far more than that because you could say, well I'll just put a brand in, you know, I'll put a brand picture in or any picture really, that'll grab someone's attention. Um, but actually there's this thing about when you're interacting with someone online, you want to see what they look like. Um, it's actually really important, it's just a kind of, I'm sure Sam with her study will know the exact reasons for this. <laughs> I don't, all I know is that <clears throat> it's a feedback that people give me all the time. Yeah. I hate it when someone sends me a message and they're that grey, nothing, <laughs> nobody, genderless. So it's a little, bit, a little bit like networking in this room, but you meet someone that's got a mask in front of them. Yeah. And they're talking from behind the mask, but you can't see them. Absolutely, like a hoodie comes to a networking meeting. I don't know who you want. Stand <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, stand out, yeah. Um, and, and so there's something about that kind of human interaction. I need to see what you look like. There's also some practical mm. reasons. I mean, if you meet someone, let's say you meet someone tonight and you swap business cards and you say, well, let's connect on LinkedIn, given the marks, it's such a great idea, maybe we should do it. And so you go away and one of you invites the other and that other person might not, for whatever reason, um, see it for a while, they might go away or whatever, they might not see it for three weeks. When they do see it, they get this invite from this person um, and there's no picture in the invite and it's just a name. And you know, you don't remember names as well as you remember faces. The combination of the two is quite powerful. Mm. And um, I, I was, I was uh, talking to someone about a story today about a guy that, um, he actually, it was, a, it was a story about how he won business. And, um, and the way it happened was that he was talking to a consultant, he needed an HR consultant, he was talking to a, a more generic consultant, and they, they, they needed somebody with HR expertise, and he said, do you know anyone? And this guy went, um, not actually worked with anybody, but there is a guy I know, yeah, well, I know of him. And he said, well, what's his name? And he went, uh, Justin, and I can't remember his second name. I do this all the time, terrible with names. And, uh, and he said, and, and the thought process was, I can see him, uh, there's his face, and his name's Justin, and he's an HR consultant. So he went on LinkedIn, and he put in to a search, first name Justin, keywords, HR consultant, right? And did a search, and northwest of it, because it was Manchester, so uh, 25 mile radius of Manchester. See what comes up. He did a search, quite a few people came up, quick scan through, there he is, that's it, yeah? Justin, that's the guy, right, that's the guy you need to speak to. Interestingly, which is another point in terms of how you use LinkedIn, he didn't know him, but he was very familiar with him because he'd seen him contributing in groups on a regular basis. This is a point that we often talk to clients about. If, if you use social media well, you pe people think they know you even before you've met them. Mm. Your so personality precedes you. Uh, uh, particularly with Twitter, actually, mm. yeah, I, I find because you reveal a little bit more about your personality mm. on Twitter, and that's much more acceptable to do so. Mm. Um, people will often come up to me, um, oh, you're Mr. LinkedIn, aren't you? That's the picture, which is as important in Twitter. Um, and then they'll say things that I've said, and I'll be like, did I say that? I don't remember that, okay? <laughs> but if you're authentic, it's not a problem. Mm. It's when you're not authentic that that becomes an issue. And again, just keeping on the sort of the practical things, you gave me some amazing advice about three years ago, which I've implemented, and it helped hugely. 
And I remember that, you, that there's an etiquette that you mentioned about when you invite someone to connect with you, you personalize the message, yeah. as opposed to just being a generic you know, default message. Yeah, so um, the default message is, I'd like to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. But actually what it says is, I'm inviting lots of people, I'm not that interested in you, you're bound to accept anyway, aren't you? <laughs> right? It's just really poor manners. It's no effort, no thought, no consideration, and people want to feel they're a bit more special. I, I don't think anybody in the room does that. No, no, I'm sure you wouldn't know. Um, <laughs> and, 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 you know, it, it's such an easy thing, such an easy thing to do. Um, there will be, inviting people is about engagement first and, and inviting afterwards. I wouldn't, um, only in exceptional circumstances would I invite someone that not yeah. had some form, I don't want to them, but certainly some form of engagement first. Yeah. And then it's easy to just refer to the engagement. Because the other thing is that you may have engaged with someone and then you've got to remember to invite them to connect, which is the thing. And a, again, another nugget I remember is that <clears throat> in your strap line under your title, you told me that I should tell people how I help people, yeah. not just a job title. Mm. There's another thing that you can add to that, actually. Um, you, this is a strap line, it's called a headline. And, and the reason it's called a headline is that's exactly what it is, i.e. Like any good headline, it should inspire you to want to read more. And that's what it is. You've got 120 characters, it's absolute gold dust. It's the first thing people see, apart from your picture and your name, and they're gonna say, is this relevant to me? Do I want to read more? The other thing actually I'll add to that is your name. Because if you add your name into your headline, you are much more visible sure. to many more people. Sure.